Welcome to Wild Things, everybody. We're on episode three. I am Conservation Officer Erica Billerbeck, and this is my son, Silas, and we are bringing our after-school program, Wild Things, home to you. So, we'll start off with episode three, and I'm not gonna tell you what it's about at first, because I want you to guess as the show goes on here. First question I have is, is there a noise that drives you absolutely crazy? Not from reading. The dogs are barking always. The dogs are barking when you're reading? How dare they? <laughs> but, so, I think all of us probably have sounds that drive us nuts. The animal that we're going to talk about today has a sound that drives it absolutely batty. I'm going to show you what that sound is. Let's go head over here. I don't know about you guys, but I love this sound. This is the sound that drives this animal crazy. Let's go find some more clues. So the other day, the kids and I were down at the creek playing and we noticed a lot of um, sticks that didn't look like the normal sticks we see at the creek. They all were missing their bark, like this stick right here. Got his bark all shaved off. That's your next clue. I think you're gonna get it on this one. So anyway, we noticed, come on over here. You can see this little trail of sticks that are missing their bark. And they lead over here. To this area where it's all the grass is all mashed down and there's a slide down right to the water so we are sure that we have an animal at work here by our tree and i know that as soon as you see this tree stump you're going to know what the animal is what is it si like the animal yeah yeah beaver beaver. So we're going to go check out some more beaver sign. We followed the creek. We're going to go on a little expedition today. Follow the creek until we can find the beaver dam. So stick with us. So we're still on the hunt for the beaver dam, but we've found some more evidence here. This looks like older beaver um sign it's like the he's chewed through or she's chewed through the log here um so the sound of running water that i talked about before the sound of running water just drives a beaver mad and makes it want to build and it's gonna um, cut down trees um, gnaw off sticks so that it can work on building its dam uh, to stop that sound of running water it doesn't like its dam to leak any water so what's strange about this is you can see how high it is. It's up to my chest level, all the way down to the ground here. I want you guys to think about this and see if you can come up with the answer about how the beaver would have chewed a stick or a log so high up in the air. And email me what you think and I'll let you know if the answer is right. But if Andy pans around here and shows the surroundings, this is Turkey Creek, and when the water's high, this whole area goes underwater. This is kind of a floodplain into the Coralville Reservoir. So that's one hint that this place does flood now and then. Um, it's obviously not flooded right now because we're standing here. But um, let's go look for some more beaver sign and see if we can find that dam. I found one. There are cut down trees everywhere. Here's one here. There's one. They're all over the place. Look at the size of the tree this beaver knocked down. It's pretty big. I bet it took a while, you think? Look at all these wood chips. Yeah, it leaves a big pile of uh, wood, wood chips, chips behind every time, just like a little chainsaw going through there. So one time, um, a long time ago, when I went camping by myself for the first time, I was camping by a pond. And in the middle of the night, I heard a sound that scared me to death. It was a big 
splashing, slapping sound. And that's what beavers do when they are alerted or alarmed. They will slap their tail against the water and dive down. I didn't know that at the time, so I was kind of scared. It's like watching Silas run from a, from a bee flying near him. That was about how scared I am. <laughs> All right, let's keep looking. Starting to feel more like the real wild things program. We're getting wet and muddy. All right, go on. And it's over my boot. And it's way over my boot. So Silas and I both got our feet drenched to show you this. We were not smart like Andy and wear rubber boots, but anyway. <laughs> well, we didn't. Um, so this looks like the work of a beaver to me. It's at least the start of a beaver dam or maybe an older one. You can see the sticks are laid down in here and there's a pile, piles of rocks as they built up the dam to try to stop the water from flowing. Um, part of the reason they do that is so they can uh, make a, an area where the water is not moving and it's uh, just a pool so they can build a lodge there. And we didn't see a lodge. but. I want you guys to get ready because we're going to go back to the house and at your house we've got a beaver dam building challenge for you. You're going to build a dam, a beaver dam, in your house. Your parents are going to love it. Let's go back to the house. Hey everyone, we're back inside now and for those of you who are going to be keeping nature notebooks with me, now is the time we're going to do our usual thing with uh, making a sketch in our nature notebooks. And then we're going to move on and build the beaver dam in the kitchen. So um, what I've chosen to draw today is part of this beaver skull. I borrowed this from the Johnson County Conservation Board. And you can see these giant chompers. This guy's in a little bit of rough shape because he's got a rubber band holding that lower jaw together. Um, so I'm probably just going to draw the upper one because I don't want to accidentally bump this and, and break it. Um, but anyway, these teeth are, beaver teeth are just like any other rodent's teeth in that because they're chewing on something all the time, they have to have this adaptation that their teeth continue to grow. Because if they didn't, they would wear their teeth down to nubs and they wouldn't end up surviving. So... Um, their teeth continue to grow and grow throughout their lives as they're doing all this chewing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this skull in such a position that I can try to draw it. Skulls are not easy to draw because they're such strange and unfamiliar shapes. But um, anyway, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to remove this top skull, move the bottom one so I don't break it. And then I'll probably, I'm thinking about drawing it... Um, maybe in this type of position. Now when I move my phone to the uh, position above, it's going to look different to you, but I think I'm going to draw it face forward like this. So this is my view of it. But now I'm going to move the camera up here to its spot so you can watch me draw. And um, it'll be in fast motion here so you can see it come together. Again, I'm going to use pen. And I should point out that if you kids are using pens at home and you want to try to watercolor on top of that, make sure that you use a pen that is permanent. This one is one that's waterproof. So when you put your watercolor paint on top, it won't smear it all over the place. So that's pretty important if you're going to use watercolors. If not, you can use whatever you want. All right, guys, I'll do my best. Here we go.
Well, let's see if I can get this aimed at the camera. Not the best. It'll do. Beaver skull. Drawn. All right, we got our wet boots off and put on some dry stuff and we're going to get a little bit muddy now to make our own homemade beaver dam. Because like we talked about, beavers don't like the sound of running water. So if they build a dam and the water is coming through that dam at any point, scientists have actually done studies that show that it's the sound of the running water going through the dam that makes them want to build more onto the dam and, and tighten it up. So what you'll need for this is some sticks or twigs and some other outdoor stuff, leaves and stuff like that, if you can gather that. If you don't have access to a tree, use toothpicks or popsicle sticks or something like that. And then you need some type of a pan. We're gonna use a painting pan. You could also use a cake pan or something like that. Um, but this allows there to be a little bit of a slope, like water running down a stream. And then if you have mud, you can use mud. Otherwise, if you don't have mud, we're going to use a mixture of flour. Can you see the flour there, Andy? Mm -hmm. Okay, flour and water. So, Sai, we're going to mix up some mud here. Use your spoon and stir that until it gets muddy. You don't have to use a lot. You can always add more if you need more. I want it to be kind of sticky mud. And you can zoom in here and show what this looks like as you're stirring it to turn it into a mud. It's a flower mud, I guess. And then all you have to do is see if you can build a dam as good as our big rodent that we have that lives here in Iowa. We're not going to chew the, the bark off our sticks like a beaver does. I don't think we're very hungry. But they do that. They eat the um, sugary part that's right inside the bark. That's what they like to eat. Okay, let's go to it. Let's see if Silas can build a dam that doesn't spill any water. on using every bit of outdoor stuff we could find. So, Sai, think you're as good as a beaver? No. No? <laughs> you don't think it's going to work? Okay. All right, Andy, you're going to have to... Wait, 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 I'm washing my hands, I want to see it, I want to see it. Okay, we're going to pour some water in like it's a stream. Andy's going to come in for a close-up and see if this water leaks and if this beaver is going to go crazy from the sound of water running. Here we go. Cross your fingers, beavers. That's bad luck. Oh. Oh, it's sort of holding. It's sort of holding. It's sort of holding. Why oh. are you pouring it all in one place, Mom? You're pouring it all in one place. Oh, because that's like a stream. Uh-oh. It held for a little bit. Not bad, buddy. It's tiny. Oh, tiny. oh we're going to put more in. See if they're, oh. <laughs> All right, guys. So I hope that you have uh, success with your beaver dams. And please send me pictures. I want to see this stuff and see how good a rodents you are. Um, I'm not very good. Not very good. Yeah, well. But anyway, um, remember, there's prizes for participating. I just need you to send me points picture for prizes. Points, points. 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 We'll add up some points and um, enough points gets you prizes. How many points? I don't know, we're not going to get into that right now, but uh, we will compile some prizes to send out for wild things, and watch for my email address at the end of the video, 
Include your name, address, and your pictures. Thanks, guys. See you next episode.